Welcome back, Stasis23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And before I get started, if you like this video, please drop a thumbs up on it. It helps out the channel more than you know. If not, thumbs down works as well. And if you like knife content and you're not already, smash that subscribe button. Today I have for you the much anticipated Benchmade Mini Adamus full review and torture testing. <laughs> the Adamus Mini Adamus comes in at $212. They're slowly starting to trickle out to dealers. Um, and as you can see, I liked it enough to get both variations. Uh, the, this variation is the black G10 with the tungsten gray Cerakote. This one's got the olive drab G10 with the flat dark earth Cerakote. And I will say the, the flat dark earth is uh, a little like smoother to the touch than the tungsten gray. It's got a little bit of a rougher texture. You have to watch the testing footage to see if that really made a difference. So what allured me to these knives besides the fact that I, love, I like Shane Siebert's uh, designs and they also, from the, the old ones were D2, they swapped a crew wear on here and they have a Rockwell range of 63 to 65, which is nice and hard. So it, it should do very well in my test, so y'all y'all will have to stay tuned. And y'all definitely want to check it out because I put this one through its paces more than I've put any other knife through. So I uh, hope y'all enjoy that. Let's get some specs out of the way. <clears throat> you have an overall length of 7.62 .6, inches, blade length of 3.25 inches, uh, grip area from right here to here of 3.75 inches. You have a handle thickness from here to here of 0.14 inches. You have a closed width in the pocket of 1.25 inches. And you have a behind the edge thickness of ranging from 18 thousandths from about here, now from about here to here. And then this tip area where it thickens up uh, gets all the way to 27 thousandths. So that, that's perfectly fine with me. I like, you know, having my thinness in my slicing area where I'm gonna be cut, doing a lot of my, my cutting. And these are sharpened from factory at around 19 degrees per side. At least this one was for sure. Uh, <clears throat> let's get some size comparisons. And then we're going to break off into this yumminess uh, footage. One of the, Let's bring this one out of the way. One knife that, that is very close in size is the DPX Hest. Now, the Hest. Um, is definitely nowhere near as stout as this one because let's just listen to this. They're all plagued with that soft titanium. Um, I, I might carbonize it, but they're just ugh. and then another knife that looks very similar to the Damas is the um, uh, SOG, what is it, XR? I don't know, something like that, but. Look, the blade shapes are very, very similar looking. They got that same swedge, except the, the, the Terminus XR has a longer swedge right there. But basically the same type of blade. You got a little bit, you got more of like a clip right here. And this is a drop point. So definitely um, have those two are good size comparisons. You got the Terminus XR, it's a good bit smaller. It has pretty much the same size. Uh, so there you go. Let's break off into the testing footage. I just wanted to say I'm trying something a little different and y'all let me know what y'all think. I'm going to probably do a voiceover to try to keep the time down as much as I possibly can. All right, guys and girls, y'all stay tuned. All right, we're going to check the sharpness. This thing got super sharp. It's sharp at 18 degrees per side. No resistance. Start with some cardboard. All right, now we're gonna move into warp speed. Look how fast I cut, boys. That's some super fast cutting. Uh, it did great through the cardboard, glide through 18 degrees per side. It came up at 130 on my best sharpener tester. Um, I don't know how accurate that is, but did great.
It already feels like there's a little snag in the blade. Let me see. Hmm. It might be some gunk. Yeah. All right, we're gonna cut up some five ace twisted sisal rope. All right, move back into supersonic speed, and here it comes. Wait for it, wait for it. Yep, my tripod was starting to fall, and I did not realize it until after the test, so that's my fault. But I used the front portion of the edge, and it did absolutely amazing. All right, we're going to do a little wood uh, shading test. There it goes. And that edge. That's being caused by the back, this jumping up here. Don't really see the need for that, but other than that, it's been comfortable. We're good to go. All right, we're gonna cut up some some paracord, some uh, tie down strap, inch wide, um, and some <clears throat> some kind of strap. It's a different type of material, almost like a seat belt material. And we're gonna see how it does through all these. We'll we'll start and see if it'll pop paracord. The edge has to be sharp. The edge did great on the paracord, especially popping that par paracord. You know it has to be sharp to do it cleanly. It had no trouble going through all this uh, twisted up paracord. And I think it would be, a as, for, as big as the knife is, I think it would be a great knife for detail work. All around great EDC so far and uh, super comfortable. This is like seat belt type banding. It did great on that. I mean, breeze through it. And, uh, go through the bungee and the two rubber hoses. Um, thickness behind the edge and stock matters on these, or at least how easy it goes through them, but let's check them out. It's gotta be sharp. Nice. I had absolutely no problems cutting up this stuff. I know I'm doing it fast, but it was very, very easy. Very hard. Check out the edge. Definitely not as sharp as it was. Got a catch right there. Got a catch right there. Could have been some slamming into the table. Right there. Right there. I didn't expect it to be dull yet. Yeah. All right, we're 
we're gonna try uh, cut through some different uh, pieces of zip tie. Now this one's gonna be kind of tough. Took some force. And we're gonna go through some denim. I decided to add the denim in here because denim, you know, is something that could dull the edge. And it could be something that you have to cut up one day, you know, they make drops out of it too. A little bit. Yeah, it's definitely not as sharp as it was in the beginning, but that's to be expected. Say, it's not hair shaving sharp, but it's definitely a little better than working sharp. Right there, you got a little catch. All right, we're gonna do some spine wax. Um, got my Kevlar gloves on. I don't expect this to have any issues because of the axis lock, but make it loud. I was definitely hitting it harder than I normally hit a knife. Let's see. No side to side. No up and down. No side to side. Still functions nice. All right, we're gonna try the baton piece of one by four. We're gonna start out with the rubber mallet. I don't see it having any problems with this. Let's see, I'm trying to make sure y'all can see. Yeah, let's push a little bit closer. All right. Keep going cross grain. They did good. Hmm. He's got to hang up. Let's see. Yeah, it's got a few hang ups. Nothing major. Still good. Right there's one. Still got a good working edge. There's another one. But if you cut fast, you don't see them. All right, we're gonna do a little tip, uh, tip strength, just do some light stabbing. Got my Kevlar gloves on just in case. I was just doing some light stabbing and uh, vertical and horizontal removing, removing the tip from the uh, wood. It did excellent, good penetration. Very robust tip on the knife. It could have probably done a lot more, but here we go. It is good to go. We're gonna try to go through these three copper wires and see how the edge holds up. 
wouldn't expect the edge to have any problems with this, but you never know. Rubber mallet. Got through it, and we do have some edge deformation. Nothing terrible. Might have just actually, it looks like it might have just scratched the polish. Let's see. Might have a little bit. First, I test the edge uh, with my fingernail. I didn't feel any any humps into the uh, blade with my fingernail, and. I took it to the paper. I started getting some catches. You'll see right here. I get a catch in the edge right there. And it wasn't terrible, uh, but I definitely could feel something. So I took it to a magnifying loop and it had rolled the edge slightly at the very apex. At first I was kind of shocked, but the more I thought about it, you know, it's not, it wasn't that, it wasn't any major damage or anything. Easily could have probably even stropped it out. With the slow cuts, you can feel the catches. Yep, we got a minor, let's see, get it in the light. Yep, right there. It just rolled the edge right there again because or dented the edge. You can see it from, if you turn it this way, See it right there. Nothing major at all. All right, we're gonna try to do a little bit of copper shaving. Got me some more, let's see. Wow, look at that, it's, it's cutting it pretty nicely. I'm doing some feather sticking with copper. Yeah, I'd say she doing well. Let's see what that looks like. Can you can just see where I hit it. That's, this is where I hit through the wire and see if it's still sharp. It has some hangups, no doubt. sharp let's see yeah it's got some hang-ups let me feel the edge some minor damage right about here still feels nice we're gonna do a little bit of impact uh, hitting on some uh, aluminum bar stock Maybe you like coming in contact with a staple or something. Let's see. I'll see that. Hit most of it in the back. You can see right up in here. I don't know what I was thinking. That's not where it was coming in contact. It was more toward the front to the middle. Uh, that was earlier damage. So, see if it'll still cut. Yeah, you can definitely feel the the spots.
Still pretty good. Now I'm just going to start cutting up stuff until I can doll the edge out. The knife at this point had some areas that were still very, very sharp. Uh, you just had some minor uh, rolls in the edge and it may not have cut phone book paper uh, cleanly, but the working edge is still amazing on this knife. Um, throughout all the cutting I did, the Cerakote held up excellent. Uh, I thought it may have caused, it, it might cause drag, but I didn't notice any noticeable drag when I was cutting. Um, through the spine whacking and the stabbing and the batoning, absolutely uh, the, the lock remained rock solid. No play in any direction. The action only got smoother and I, after doing all the cutting, I noticed the ergos were way better than I expected. It felt good in hand, you know, just from holding the knife. But once I started doing the shaving and stuff like that, I was kind of worried that all that excessive jimping around the handle would create hot spots. But um, it, it didn't. The only spot that gave me any trouble was above the axis lock, that jimping whenever I was in the hammer grip, putting a lot of force downward where it was pushing the blade up, it, it was kind of giving me some issues, but not terrible. I didn't have to stop to put on gloves. I continued the test. Um, and this, this knife is not geared toward, you know, just your everyday EDC guy. It's more for somebody that would probably be wearing gloves. Um, it's a totally ambidextrous knife, tip up left or right hand carry. And the only thing that really gave me any troubles was uh, the thumb studs. The cone shaped thumb studs bothered my finger, but that's a quick fix. And once again, it's not, it's, it's geared toward, you know, military, first responders, stuff like that. That'll probably be wearing uh, gloves whenever they're using this knife, and you don't want to slip off when you're trying to deploy the knife. So I totally understand. My final conclusions, the knife's an absolute home run. I think it's going to do wonderful for Benchmade. Uh, <clears throat> one I highly recommend if you like the aesthetics of it. And if you want a knife that you can use hard if you need to, or if you want to use it for your day-to-day -day task, I, I don't think it'll have a problem. I'm going to do something a little different here, though. I'm going to try to touch up the edge in just a second on the Spyderco Sharp Maker, just to see if I can bring that edge back. And y'all stay tuned for that. Alrighty, we're going to see real quick if we can bring this edge back on the Spyderco Sharp Maker, just to see. See, I'm trying to do this behind camera, so can't promise y'all anything. Even though I sped it up, uh, I wanted to give y'all an idea of how quickly I was able to bring the edge back. It took me four minutes and 28 seconds to completely get the edge back to where it was, you know, nice and sharp. It could shave some hair. Um, and it was super difficult. That's the first time I was uh, trying to do this behind a tripod. So I'm leaning over. That's why I'm kind of holding the knife with the left hand. Um, but got the job done. Let's see how that edge is now. Sorry about the shaking. Put these over here so I don't hit them. Oh yeah, right back to sharp. I'd say that's pretty darn impressive. It feels that sharp. I was I just wasn't sure. Because my hands are tired. Let's see if that front area where I hit that copper is still got a snag. Nope. No snags. Yep, oh, right there actually. Let's try that again. If there's a snag, it's a minor one. All right, I hope everybody has having an absolutely wonderful day. And uh, let me know what y'all think. If y'all like this, I'll keep doing it like this.
Deuces.